Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, we welcome you to the Aries Solar Festival webinar of the 2025 initiative. Uh, my name is Alexander Ilchuk and on, I'm welcoming you on behalf of the coordination group of the 2025 initiative. Today, um, our speaker will be Maria Cristina Amaral from Brazil. And the topic of our work, our pondering and sharing and the meditation will, is related to the keynote of Aries and that topic, Mind the Revealer of the Real. And today's webinar will be probably somewhere different we continue experiment and uh, uh, Maria Cristina will share the 25 years of experience of her experience and experience of her group working with the techniques of occult meditation and um, I will just pass the microphone for Maria Cristina that she could <laughs> lead us in the initial alignment and throughout this presentation. I will help Maria Cristina with different slides. So just Maria Cristina, whenever um, you need any slides, let me know. Hi, Maria Cristina. <laughs> hi, Sasha. Hi, friends. Thank you all for being here. And Sasha, I would like to see uh, the keynote of Aries on the screen. And uh, uh, before starting, I'd like to tell you, if you don't understand that the pronunciation of something I say, you just write to Sasha that he is going to translate. So before we start our alignment, uh, I'd like to, to, to present what uh, we are trying to do this afternoon here in Brazil or evening somewhere. This webinar is a privileged opportunity to work together. We are most of attendees of the webinars are already students from the K. All, most of them already belong to a group or already follow some uh, meditation technique. So when we come together, we can provide a um, central of energy to be used by the hierarchy. What I, what I mean is esoteric students, they are trained to study by themselves, to find the answer of their question by themselves and uh, esoteric students are taught to walk alone. So at the same time we are taught to work as a group. So somewhere in the teachings it is said that uh, esotericism is the science of administrating paradox. So we have to walk alone. We have to become the path ourselves before we, s we can walk the path. We have to become the way. But for doing the work, we need to work as a group. And the moment is this group is humanity. It is humanity who is taking the first step and uh, at this moment humanity is trying to become the path before humanity can give the next step. So what are we going to do this uh, in this webinar? We are going to try to reflect together, to think together, and together to invoke 
the available energy and to offer these energies to be used by the true inner government of the planet, which is the hierarchy. Uh, and, and this um, exercise, it's going to be an experiment where I'm going to use a sound just to, like a conductor conducting orchestra, giving the pace and the movement of the group. And uh, we are trying to work with the energy contained in the keynote of uh, Aries. I come forth and from the plane of mind I rule. So the first pondering or the first reflection, who come forth? We all know, at least theoretically, what comes forth is the soul. This is why in all mantras given by decay, it's always the I. The I is the higher self. It's the true self. It's the one self. So it's not a we. So it's the soul who comes forth, and it's the soul which rules. But from where does it rule? It rules from the plane of mind. And then we can say that uh, Aries is the light of life itself. And uh, this light is the soul itself. But uh, at this point, we can, it's useful to recall that the same way that the personality is threefold, the soul is threefold. So when we talk about soul, we talk about mind. The mind is the soul itself. And when we talk about soul, we talk the soul as the son of mind. And following this reflection, we can say that out of mind, there is no creation. So before we keep on our reflection, Sasha, I would like you to, to, to present that quote uh, given by, by DK. Um, this group, the 2025 group, and all attendees, we are all committed students, committed servers. So to, to take part on this we webinar is an act of service. And then uh, there is a quote from Dana Chu and where the master says, you might hear ask, what can we as a group accomplish? What is it that uh, we can do? And, and the master give the answer. You can, for one thing, begin to work as an ashram works. 
using the power of thought, originating pressure, directing thought currents along specified lines out into the world, creating thought form which will make clear cut contact with other mind and which will bring about definite changes in the consciousness of humanity. So we are told that uh, in the age of Aquarius we need to work as scientists work. And scientists, they follow laws, they follow science, they follow principles, and they follow the, the directions of proved science. So when we as workers wanted to be scientific workers, we needed to follow the instructions using the power of thought, originating pressure, directing short currents, and uh, making contact with other minds. And this is what will bring changes in human consciousness. So let us do now an exercise of alignment, trying to create this mind contact. And uh, one thing when we go to meditate is that uh, we need to learn to work simultaneously. It's not on one side, it's not on the other side, it's not above, it's not below, it's all together. And uh, this together can also be um, talked about a triangle where we have the, the meditator and then the meditator has the brain and then a mind so he is, through his mind, he is in contact with other minds and then in contact with the soul. So it's uh, known that uh, all meditators have to strengthen this triangle in between soul, mind and brain. So when we do the meditation, these three aspects must work simultaneously. But the thing is, the brain doesn't understand linear language. To talk to the brain or to command the brain, we needed to show it images. But uh, when we show the images, we put together imagination, visualization, and intention. So the intention is in the high mind and the purpose, and then the imagination is on the astral body, and the visualization is in between the two. There is a difference between visualization and imagination, but uh, when we conduct energy, the intention must hold the whole structure on the apex of the mind. So to help the brain with images, I'm going to use the sound for the whole group to move as a one. So the first thing we are going to do is to visualize the group. We are going to visualize the group as a bright sphere. 
Yes, Sasha. This is the group. So the image of the group impress our brain with, uh, uh, with the intention, let us visualize the 25, 2025 group, which is helping in preparing the way, which is helping humanity to give the next step. The group, together with all attendees, and all people who have done webinars, who have presented, they all together on the mental plane, they form this beautiful sphere of light, like a storehouse of light. But uh, before we move ahead, we are going to make a more clear connection visualizing the group, the group soul now as a sun. So we are working simultaneously. There is several images that we are going to work. It doesn't matter if you don't follow everything. Just do your best because some people are not trained to move fast images. And now we are going to visualize the, the soul of the sphere as a sun. Sasha, the sun. Can you show the image of the sun? No, the sun was rays. No problem, we are all experimenting. Now we visualize the group's soul as a sun. Let us focus on the group's soul. As higher as we are able to, and let us visualize each of us as a golden ray of the soul of the group. Let us bring to our awareness that is just one soul. And all personalities are just fragments here on the physical plane of the soul. So visualize yourself as a golden cable hooked or part of the sun of the soul of this group. And now you are going to visualize in this golden cable a star hanging from the cable. The idea is we impress the brain with images, keeping the intention behind the visualization. And uh, we now we are stars. We are made of crystals. This star is a symbol of our personality. The personalities has, every one of us has a golden cable focused on the group soul. And now we are going to project from our star lines of light connecting. This is the idea of the web. This is also the idea of a social web. We all, many of us, are friends in Facebook. So we know 
that uh, when we project something in our wall, anything we project in our wall is projected in all walls. We are doing here with the hanging stars a similar thing. We are projecting lines through the mind, connecting all group members and focusing all in the group soul. Now we can move together as a group and we are going to place this group or this sphere of light we are going to place in the new group of world servers. We are going to offer it to the new group. So now in the screen you have uh, a web made of stars. Each star is a group. Each star is a member of the new group of old servers. When your brain see the image, and when your brain keep the intention, the brain is going to know exactly what to do to bring this to be effect of the physical plane. Because we are <clears throat> members of the new group, and because we are also members of triangles and members of goodwill, let us place the 2025 group all together with all attendees. Let us offer it to the case ashram. The case ashram is one of the ashram most active in the process of externalization. We can, we can see his ashram as the bridge in between the new group and the major ashrams. We can also see Dike's ashram as the heart of the new group. It was the master decay known as Mercury or the messenger. He was the one who took the task to give birth to the new group. He was the midwife to the new group of old servers. And so the roots of the new group is his ashram. He also said that uh, goodwill, which is a uh, hierarchical enterprise, goodwill is a cell of uh, the heart center of the new group. And uh, he was also the one in charge to bring forth triangles and goodwill, world goodwill. So the, the anchoring point of triangle and goodwill is also inside the case ashram. So every time when we work as a group and we offer our contribution to the heart of the new group, naturally we are in touch with the heart of hierarchy, the Christ, so we are through the master and we are also in touch with the heart of all groups of the new group. So when we move as a group weaving these connections and then we focus on the heart of the ashram we also can visualize the, ash, the heart of the ashram as a sun. And uh, we can visualize all members inside the ashram as a ray 
of the sun. And let us, with this intention, let us put sound in this group contribution. What we have done since we started this reflection was moving as a group to place ourselves on the, in the ashram to offer our contribution. We have weaved with light the path. Now we are going to sound the sound to make it flesh. So after we move as a group, let us keep all this step consciously and let us sound the mantra fusion. The mantra fusion actually is an act of offering. I am one with my group brothers and all that I have is theirs. May the love which my soul pour forth to them with the strength which is in me reach and encourage them and make the sort with my soul creates reach and encourage them. You see, uh, I don't know by heart in English, but uh, you know it. The idea is I am one. The love of my soul is yours. The light of my mind is yours. The thought that I create is yours. So during this experiment, let us keep this idea in mind. Everything we, we are doing, we are doing for the new group of old servers that uh, in, its, in its turn, is doing for humanity and let us move ahead on our reflection but during the whole reflection let us also exercise to keep this connection to keep this cable on the sun of the group soul let us visualize again the sun of the group soul. The sun with its rays we are one ray of the sun. Our mind is focused on the sun because it's focused there we can invoke understanding. We can invoke light. So we are going to start our reflection now. And uh, any light of understanding that uh, may come as a result of reflection, let us leave it into the group mind. Let us not appropriate the understanding. Any understanding, any light, we leave it in the group reservoir of sort. At the same time, if we have doubt, if we do not understand, we do the same. We don't release the pressure. We project the doubt up as invocation to receive light from above and not from the speaker. By the way, in this webinar, we are not going to have a question time. All doubt and question must be projected up and we should ask to the soul and invoke right answer from the soul to the group mind. This is uh, one 
one way of experimenting to work from the group mind. And then now I'm, I'll keep you on making questions for the reflection. Um, I would like to also to, to suggest that uh, together with this group reflection, we should not accept anything that is said. We should not reject anything that is said. We are doing an exercise as a detached observer, as a group. And let us keep it in the mind that this is a group invocation. This is a group movement. Let us make an effort to keep this ray, this golden cable focused on the highest point of the group reservoir. And uh, I would like to bring to, to the group mind the following quote from, from Decay, where he talks about uh, the Second World War. So let us see what the case said about the Second World War. It was previously. So in the year 1935, the master has given to his group of disciples the first part of the great invocation. And then at that time, he had about 50 students. Well, sometimes I can't remember the numbers, but if it was not 50, a little less, a little more. And he said that this group of meditators could have avoided the Second World War or help to avoid it. And then the quote says, I said earlier that the war could have been averted from expression on the physical plane had the disciples and aspirants of the world measured up to the opportunity and responsibilities. The great invocation was rendered powerless from the angle of dynamic usefulness because the majority of those who used it turned it into a peace prayer. We know what means a prayer. And uh, we know um, we use what body is used when we pray. So we know the difference between praying, meditating, and invoking. There are different steps. So, since I started studying these teachings more than 35 years ago, I was struck by this quote. Then I thought, uh, if a war could have been avoided, why it was not? There are, you know, there are many quotes on the wall where he, he talks about it. I have some I can send if some one of you are interested, because there are um, more um, indication. He said you are more concerned about your own stuff, your petty interests. You are not concerned about humanity as a whole. So, and then I could not find the quote, but I know it by heart. It's in the Raise and Initiation, where the masters, the master talk about a dark cloud hovering over 
a huge area on the planet. And uh, we know when there are dark clouds, they precipitate. If they are dispersed, there is no precipitation. So then the master said, this dark cloud, it's uh, above or around or hovering um, over the Middle East, Balkans region, Pakistan, Russia, um, Greece, there is a, it's a huge area with this dark cloud, and then he asks, is this cloud going to be dispersed, or is it going to drop as a catastrophe over humanity? This quote, or he, this fact, he has communicated to the esoteric groups more than six years ago. When we look what's going on on the planet this moment, we can see that uh, this cloud was not dispersed. So the question is, if 50 members could avoid a world war, why 60 years when the new group has millions of groups doing meditation, doing webinars, doing triangles, why what is being precipitated now is catastrophe? I don't know the answer, but uh, we can, as as do all scientists, they use hypotheses. And uh, usually hypotheses, they are based on science. And uh, when we, we think about science, if we recall that uh, when Newton found the, the law of universal um, gravitation, it was in, in the year 1666, and when he found it, or discovered it, or precipitated it, he said, uh, I was able to do it because the, I, I was, I climbed on the shoulder of giants. So 300 years ago, physics had already giants. And uh, when we come to esoteric science, it was given only 60 years ago, 70 years ago. And uh, the, the new group did not yet have time to build the instrument to, to apply the science. So the hierarchy, the idea or the purpose comes always from, from the um, real aspect, is from Shambhala, the purpose, the plan is at the hierarchy, but uh, the how, how to do it, the building uh, stage is up to humanity. So when we have a recipe, we have the ingredients, and then we have uh, how to do it. So, and uh, for the esoteric science, we don't have yet the instrument and how to work with uh, subtle energies. So we are told that uh, the esoteric science is the science that works with energies behind the forms. 
So esotericism doesn't work with forms. It works with consciousness or with the soul arrested in the form. So we could just think that the first, first base condition for esotericism is to identify energies behind expression. What energy is this? Is this energy, what is the source? Does it come from a theoretical plane? Does it come from astral plane? Does this energy is concrete mind? Or is it soul? Or maybe abstract mind? If we go to the, the book, um, white magic, which is a huge manual for for the, the esotericists to learn how to to be a white magician, it is said we need to identify all the ideas which are still on the mental plane. Are we contacting old ideas or new ideas? Are we contacting things that should be discarded? Or are, you, are we, as a group, giving birth to a new thing? We don't know. We don't have the instrument for measurement. And then, I use, usually, I like to, to quote Decay again, because uh, there is a book by this master called uh, Discipleship in the New Age. Two books. In, all, in any other place, we find precise information about what means discipleship in the New Age. It's kind of a manual to be applied. So in this book, the experiment was to Train disciples. And uh, the master once, he told to one of his disciples, he was training disciples directly. And then he said to one of his disciples, every month, send me during the time of the full moon, send me your thoughts. Of course, the, the committed disciple, the well-intended disciple had sent the swords. Six months later, you can read what the master said. You have not sent out your swords to me. I have not registered any sort. You have sent out devotion, desire, demands, aspiration, longings and wishes, but not one clear thought. Why? Think this out, my brother. Send out your thoughts to me, and I will recognize them. Learn the distinction between thought and desire. The two are not clearly defined in your mind. Uh, this uh, this bit below this quote is is from is from another book. I have mixed them, sorry, but uh, it's all related to preciseness, effectiveness, point, uh, one pointedness, and to work from the right plane, from the right point of tension, and with the right substance. So, if we, as esotericists, I always, I, I ask myself, do I know to distinguish between a thought and a desire? When I'm doing the meditation, am I sending out thought, light of aspiration? I don't know. But, uh, as a group, maybe as an individual, we may not know, but as a group, 
if we are really focused on the um, on the heart of the new group, we can invoke instructions to to learn to distinguish. And then, because we are uh, under the dispensation of the mind of God, which is Aries, and let us recall the rulers of Aries, we cannot talk about Aries without talk about uh, Libra. We cannot, the same way we cannot talk about a day without talking about day and night. One day is half light, half darkness. We also cannot talk about uh, ending or beginning of a cycle without talk about ending. So we cannot talk about Aries without talking about Pisces. So the whole Christian world is celebrating today Today, in the Christian um, tradition, we are celebrating what is called the communion. The, I don't know how to say it in English, Eucharisty, which means on one Thursday, a Jupiter rule day, the Christ has come up to the upper chamber to meet his disciples. So this also gives an indication that the meeting place, the sharing place, the union place is always at the upper chamber. And uh, this upper chamber is above the fourth subplane of the metal plane. But the stairs and the ladder that take to that uh, upper chamber are the four levels of the mind. We have to go step by step, climbing the ladder until we place as a man. Man means mind, manas on the fourth subplane of the mental plane. This is the place where the Antakarana begins. This is the base of the Antakarana. So we need to know when we close our eyes, where are we standing? And uh, how can we project the bridge? The bridge is made by light. The substance of creation is light. The substance of manifestation is light. I'm going to say something, as I told you, do not accept it. It's not love, it's light. The love is the league, is the liquid that inspires what form substance must take. And uh, is one component of the bridge. Actually, the bridge is done from the first plane of the mental plane up, together with the soul. So triplicity became a duality. Soul and personality together project the bridge to the highest mental plane, to the place of manas, which is the mental permanent atom. But we are not going to, to go to this now. We are going to reflect about the ending of uh, a year and the beginning of another year. We are during Aries. We are beginning a new cycle. And uh, we are also at the ending of the age of Pisces. And we are at the beginning of the age of Aries. So we cannot think of Aries without think about the beginning of the age of Aries. 
and uh, we all know how There seems to be problems with the sound, so let's just uh, stay in meditative alignment. Sorry, when when uh, Marius. Okay, yes, the sound is back. Sorry, Maria Cristina, we couldn't hear you for a th about a minute. Can I hear you? Yes, now we can hear you. Yes, but for like about. Sasha. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me, Maria Cristina? I cannot hear anything. Hi. Um, so hopefully the connection will be restored. It might take a few seconds. Okay, Maria Cristina, now we can hear you. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Um, um, uh, you know, you must be ready for all these things because uh, interference all, always happens. Um, we were talking about uh, uh, I don't know if, if the group has fault, but it doesn't matter. Let us just keep uh, thinking about uh, the top of the mountain where we can talk about uh, with God, and God is fire. So this is a very clear statement from Aries. God is fire, and fire can be met only on the mental plane. So, um, 
before I come back to this idea that fire can be made only on the mental plane, uh, I would like to finish the thought that when, when Moses came down, he found the children of Israel worshipping the golden calf. So the golden calf is the ideal of the age of Taurus that was beautiful and valuable, but it was crystallized. It cannot expand. So the race needs to leave behind the beautiful and what is already conquered and move ahead. So, but only the children were worshipping. And then we came through the age of Aries. At the ending of the age of Aries, the children of God, they were kept worshipping the golden lamb. Beautiful, it's the mind. But then the, the children didn't move into the age of Pisces. So now we are at the ending of the age, the age of Pisces. So all meditators, we are at the risk to keep on worshipping the golden fish. And uh, if we do this, we are looking behind and we do not move ahead to the new age, to the age of Aquarius, the age of science. If we think about science and about the fifth race, about the fifth plane, about the fifth kingdom, about the fifth principle, the whole age of Aquarius is about mind. Only at the mental plane, the three fires can be united. In the mental plane, we found fire by friction, solar fire, and electrifier. The unification or the work of distribution have to be done on the mental plane. And, uh, and then, at the ending of this age, what we see? We see a huge movement from many colors, and, and then we see ourselves. Talking about Pisces, talking about Pisces in the Exoteric astrology, Pisces rules the feet. On esoteric astrology, Pisces rules the path. So we need to know what is our next step. We need to know our path. Humanity needs to know our path. We need to know. If you don't know, we cannot move. So somewhere in, in the manuals are written, we have to know for sure, without any doubt, what is our next step. And how are we going to, to give it? How humanity is going to move. And then, at the same time, we find that we, when we close the eyes, we don't distinguish between a desire and between a thought. We don't distinguish, we don't identify the source of energy. We don't identify the source of communication. We, we, we are so highly idealist, we are so highly well intended that uh, somehow we see our own ideal and not what is real. And what is real can be revealed only by the light of the mind. 
uh, we don't have time to to go into this. Uh, what means reveal? Actually, it means to cover with veils. It's to put a veil. And uh, and how we unveil the things. We don't have time to to go. We we are almost one hour talking, not talking, pondering, thinking, and invoking light. This light invoked through this time is filling up the reservoir of the group mind, and it's going to be available to be used by the, the hierarchy or by humanity itself. But one thing uh, before closing to, to start uh, alignment and also uh, uh, exercise on sounding the great invocation combined with the breath breathing in, holding, breathing out, holding, and all simultaneously. But before um, doing this, I would like to, to bring, actually I mentioned, we cannot talk about Pisces without talk about Virgo. And then without talk about Aries. So we cannot talk about Aries without talking about Libra. And actually, when we go up to the upper chamber, we have to be there with the soul, which is the Christ, and the 12 um, signs. We have to synthesize all the 12. So we cannot exclude things. Because in the keynote of uh, cancer, it is said, I build a light at the house and therein I dwell. So, the light of the house is the temple. At each age, one aspect of the temple is built. So, and when, when the temple is ready, the soul comes in. It is, the soul is the Christ. So, and then when the Christ enters into the temple, there are, he finds a table. He finds table inside the temple. Sasha, can you show the table? I'm sorry, this is not a beautiful image, but the table has four legs on the ground. Uh, I mentioned that uh, when the Moses talked to, to God, the God has given him a tablet, or a table, or a board, or a square. So we can say that the four legs of the table is the four levels of the concrete mind. And then, when the soul comes into the temple, it turns the table upside down. It means we can also associate the table. The table is a flat surf surface. And uh, we can relate it to a flat muscle in our physical body, which is the diaphragm that divides what is up and what is down. So when the, the soul comes into the temple, the four legs are turned up. The soul is going to plug into the higher centers. And uh, when the real aspect is invoked, then we have uh, the result of this ten upside down table, which is uh, the pyramid. Uh, the highest point of the pyramid is the crown center. It is the wheel aspect. If we place a star 
on the top of the pyramid, we have a symbol of the fifth ray, of the fifth kingdom, of the solar angel. The solar angel is at number five. The five-pointed star is the number of the Christ. The five-pointed star is the symbol of the soul. Pira means fire. Pyramid means the place of fire. And the base of the pyramid is the fourth subplane of the metal plane. This is the place we need to place ourselves when we meditate. And uh, another thing, when Moses took his people from, from the slavery in Egypt, he took it to the desert. And the people, they were not happy. It's too dry. No water, no flower, no pleasure, no sensation. But uh, the desert is the burning ground. It's the place we have to cross before we can reach the land of honey and milk. So what happens when we go to meditate, and I saw it many, many times, but uh, I, I saw in a group gathered on the physical, even people who has a powerful mind, when the eye is closed, instead of hold the mind active and receptive up, it's so difficult to keep the mind in the, uh, the attention in the mind that people they drop to the higher plane of the astral plane. And uh, to meditate, we have to exercise to be like the humming bird, which is Libra. And Libra says, the light that moves to rest. The place to meditate is on the fire. But uh, the mind has to be fast and moving like the running humming bird. When we look at the humming bird, he seems planing. He seems stopped, but it's the pause into movement. So this inner pause, positive down and negative only up, no feeling. The feeling moment comes when we start going up, because actually, according to the science, of uh, meditation. Feeling means imagining. Imagination or feeling activity are the same. It's not feeling sensation. It's a very thin line. So when we go up, if we feel we get stuck on the gluing plane, which is the high level of the astral plane, and, and we have to, to go. You see the, the association can be done with the atmosphere of the Earth. If the rocket has not enough fire, doesn't leave the atmosphere, and it stay rounding around the Earth, that doesn't go to the place where it means meant to go. So the same with meditation. It's so difficult to cross the desert that it's easy to release the tension and to come down to the high level of the astral. So um, we, we, we cannot talk. We don't have more time to, 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 to think, to ponder. Any, as I said, if you doubt it, project up the doubt. The doubt is a point of tension. And with tension, you can use the, the Sagittarius energy. It's the tension to release the arrow of the thought. But do not release it to any teacher, to any um, 
guru to any body uh, release the arrow of your attention to you, to the soul and the answer is going to be sure if we we meet as a group on the right plane if we create the right tension if we do not allow to be caught on the misplaced idealism of the Piscean age and uh, um, we, we, we manage. Another thing I, I before closing is the, the, the body that sees is mind. The body that touches is the astral body. When we, we say that touch means don't touch with your astral body. Don't touch. When we touch, we get glue on, on, on the plane. But we are, uh, the scientist is allowed to feel when all the, the building process are, are ready, up there on the right place, when it's coming down to precipitation, then we have to touch it. But to touch, feeling as if, but feeling as if according to the purpose, according to the intention, according to the, the pattern from the mind of God. It's not feeling by my feeling. It was so good. So every time when we are doing the meditation, a building meditation, working with fire, and uh, the group get that state, it was so nice, then we know where we find this nice, this beautiful, this flower, and this sensation. But uh, uh, um, in, in times of clones, in time of zircons, uh, that stones, it's difficult to distinguish between diamond and uh, artificial place. So this science of meditation is a real, needs a real scientific training, but we need to develop the how. So now we are going to, again, to release all question and all invoke the light we are going to release into the mental plane of humanity. We are going to help to turn the table upside down, but not but, uh, focusing, making the fourth kingdom a pyramid. And we are, we are going to repeat again the same steps of alignment. Let us visualize the group as a sphere of light. Let us raise our attention and place ourselves on the base of the Antakarana, on the fourth subplane of the mental plane. Let us be positive down and receptive only up, keeping this dual activity. The pose is negative positive at the same time. Let us visualize the group soul as a sun. Let us visualize all group members, all attendees, all previous and future presenters as a ray of the sun. Let us visualize each of us as a golden cable focused on the sun, on the heart of the sun. And let us visualize each of us as a hanging star. Let us visualize ourselves as a made of crystal, completely clean, radiating on the fourth corner of the earth. Let us now project lines of light on toward all group members, including all, and raising together to the group soul. 
and let her visualize again the sphere of light. We lost connection. We are good. Maria Cristina, we can hear you. Please continue. Um, uh, it's it's amazing that we can hold the tension. We are group again. We are this is field of light, and we are going to offer all the light we have invoked. We are going to offer to to the new group of world servers. So visualize the planet Earth. Visualize the first kingdom, the second kingdom, the third kingdom, cover the planet with a cover of Christmas tree light. It represents humanity. Now cover humanity with a web of stars. This is the image of the new group. Show to your brain. When, when God talked to Moses, the stone is the brain. And the purpose and the intention have to be carved in the brain. This image helps us with this. And let us place ourselves inside the ashram of the cave. And the master, he instructed one of his disciples, he said, visualize my ashram as a sphere of magnetic light. Let us visualize the ashram of decay as the heart of the new group. On the top of the web. We can also use the image of a lotus. And inside the lotus, on the core of the lotus, let us visualize the case ashram. And let us place all thoughts, all light, let us give it to the work. Let us consciously offer it to the master and to the work. And uh, Sasha. Could you sound the mantra of fusion, which is a mantra of offering? We have built all connections. Let us sound the mantra. Breathe in. I am one. I am one with, with my, my group brothers. Group brothers. And all that and I have, all that is, I have is theirs. May the love my, which is in my soul pour force to them. to them. May the strength May the sense, which is in me lift, lift and, and aid, aid them. them. May the May thoughts which my soul my creates reach and, and encourage, encourage them. them. Now let us visualize the planetary Takarana. We are going to project from the web of a star at Rainbow Bridge. Visualize Above the planet, symbolically, the hierarchy, this yellow ring. 
in the center of the hierarchy, visualize the Christ. Project the Antakarana through the Christ, through the triangle behind the Christ, the Buddha, the spirit of peace, and the avatar of synthesis. Project up to this huge star, which is the symbol of Shambhala. This is the way we are showing to our brain the planetary Antakarana. Now, we are all placed on the web of star. At the same time, we are placed together with the hierarchy. It's a simultaneous activity. We are going to combine the breath and the sound. And we are moving together. And I'm going to guide all steps. And uh, we see the planet from the standpoint of the hierarchy. And at the same time, we are together with humanity. Let us breathe in and project the rainbow to the hierarchy. And let us say, from the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. Breathe in light. Hold it with full lungs. Processing the intention. Breathe out now light upon the planet. Hold with the empty lungs and visualize the light penetrating the planet through the five entrances, the five cities, the five chakras, and the light descending on Earth. We are bringing down the light. Now again, breathe in, project the Antakarana to the Christ. From the point of love, within the heart of God. Let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. Breathe in love, holding the love with full lungs. Breathe out love, penetrating the planet. Hold with empty lungs visualizing the love, unifying, healing, eliminating divisions. Again, all together, breathe in and breathe out, project to the will of God center and say, from the center where of the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. Breathe in the will to good as a group, hold it with full lungs and a clear intention, and breathe out upon the earth and hold with empty lungs, contemplating goodwill prevailing on earth, establishing right human relationships. So now, light and love and power are focused on the fourth kingdom. So focus on the fourth kingdom, on the base of the bridge. Breathe in and say from the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. 
visualize that the Christ has entered into the temple and has turned up humanity. And now the, the cube, the table, is upside down, and then we have humanity as a pyramid, the symbol of the fifth kingdom, it's now on earth. Feel it as if it was a fact and say, let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Feeling as if it was, it is a fact. Visualize the keynote of Aries. I come forth, and from the plane of mind I rule. It is the fifth kingdom. It is the fifth principle, the hierarchy, which is ruling now. Visualize the keynote of Cancer. I have built a lighted house. Keep the intention, the kingdom is already here for the ones who has eyes to see. Let us visualize the planet metal body full of light. It's also counterpart full of light and it's etherical body. Let us hold all this alignment focusing all seven kingdoms and let us say let it be sounding the om the om is means make it flesh according to my intention and according to this image of illumination breathe in Oh. When you hear the bell, use your imagination, which is a feeling activity, and visualize a rain of golden drops of love or honey or any energy that uh, you associate with the higher self of the planet, like a smoothing and balsamic rain precipitating over the planet of your group over uh, uh, the 2025 upon the planetary Takarana and inside your mind and heart and thank you for your participation
Maria Cristina. I suggest to keep it silent for another thirty seconds or so, just to to begin together. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Maria Cristina. For our collective service. And the recording of today's webinar will be available in the, on our website, in the archive <laughs> section of the website. I want to remind you that the 2025 initiative coordination group um, in suggests everyone to join the cyclic meditation, meditating on key themes of each sign related to the light. We started this in um, with the new moon. Now we are in the full moon and we meditate together on the key note the light of life itself and as we now in the full moon period we keep our tension high on this keynote and starting with the full moon we will begin the distribution phase grounding our understanding in the lower mind and in the matter and we encourage everyone to share their impressions starting with right after the full moon and radiate it into the humanity. <coughs> and our next uh, webinar will be uh, during the Vesak Festival. And uh, we will invite panelists from five continents together to share and bring the focus on the needs of humanity to meditate together in alignment with the hierarchy and Shambhala. Thank you very much. Let's stay connected. <laughs>